When we declare a width on something, usually we give it a sort of specific size, right? We're saying it's 600 pixels or 10 rem, or maybe you're using a percentage or viewport width or something. So it's a little bit more dynamic, but we actually have three keywords we can use that rely on the intrinsic sizing of an element, and they can be used in really interesting ways. And those are min content, max content, and fit content. And we're gonna look at what all three of them are in this video. Hello, my friend and friends. I'm so glad that you've come to join me once again. And if you're new here, my name is Kevin and here at my channel, I hope you fall in love with CSS. And if I can't make you fall in love with it, I'm hoping to at least make you a little bit less frustrated by it. And I think one of the reasons people do get frustrated with CSS is they just don't know all the things that you can actually do with it. And sometimes there's problems that come up and if we don't know the solution to it, it just it gets frustrating for sure. And while I think that the min content, max content and fit content aren't things that you're gonna use every single day. They're those types of things that help solve very specific problems. And when those problems come up, you are so happy to know about them because so much about CSS isn't always remembering every single part of it. It's just knowing that there's solutions out there and being able to quickly find them afterwards. And I think this is gonna be right up the alley of that type of thing. So let's dive in and take a look here. So uh, I am in VS Code and this is a fun little layout that I built the other day. So if you wanna see the video on how I made this layout, you can check out uh, the link in the description down below. But for now, let's focus on this. And I've created this R products here, which is my, my main title, which is really boring. <laughs> and so uh, I'm just gonna go to the bottom of this file just so we can sort of focus only on my main title. And so on here, we can just come in and say the font size. I'm gonna make it pretty big for now. Uh, maybe that's gonna be too big. That's not too bad. There we go, okay. Now to really understand what's happening with these three properties um, and just widths in general, especially when you have short bits of text, it's very helpful if there's a background. So I'm quickly going to add a background to this and then we'll keep going from there. All right, so there we go. We have my our product showing up there and I put a little bit of padding with this background gradient that's on there. Um, maybe we could just throw margin bottom on there as well. Uh, just so we have some space underneath it. And what um, what's happened here is you'll notice I've put some padding on the left, but in, so on the left and the right. So I have my padding here, but this side's stretching all the way out. And that's just because the default width on a block level element, if I were to do one, the width is auto. And the auto keyword is actually very different, or not very different, but is different from 100%, even though right now it will work the same. Um, but auto and 100% are a bit different. And if you want, I've done a video on the exploration of those two. So once again, I've linked that one down in the description if you're curious about that. But with the width auto means it's a block element. So it's gonna stretch, it's gonna fill up the available space basically um, is what this width auto is going to do. And of course, you know, I could come in here and say that this is actually 50% and then it's 50% and that 50% is based on the on, on the parent. So it's in a container now. So um, as that moves and grows and the, the text is overflowing, but it's white on white. So we just don't see it, but you can see there the the, the parent or the, the width is adapting to the screen size, or we could set a fixed size on that, of course, 600 pixels. Uh, and then it's just locked in. Now it doesn't even matter what the screen size is. Um, but wouldn't it be nice to sort of have like a middle ground or something where, you know, it, it's shrinking, it sort of fits the text a little, we can do that. Um, I'm just gonna do one other thing because this is driving me nuts, but I'm gonna throw a line height on here, line height of one, um, just because I think it doesn't, there we go. It's gonna, anyway, what we're gonna see as this goes on to two lines, it's gonna look a little better. Um, but let's come in here and I'm gonna do a width of first max content. And so keyword, and this is all based on intrinsic sizing. And I'll explain a little bit more of that, but if you look at it now, it's fitting the content that is inside of here. So it's the width is matching the text that I have. And when I say intrinsic sizing, it means that it's based on, you know, it, it's the browsers figuring it out, let's say. So if I just change this to be products instead of our products, the size of it will shrink. Or if we had a longer one, it would be bigger because it's intrinsically calculating it. We're not explicitly saying this is 700 pixels. It's, it's figuring it out on its own based on the content that's in there. This is a lot like how height often works, where the more content we have, the higher something gets. So we can sort of get width to behave that way. And you might be going, this is what I've been looking for for so long, this is great, but there is one downside uh, to this one. We're gonna do two words for this just to make it stand out why. And that is when the browser gets too small, well, max content will not break. It's just gonna go on. And if we did the same thing on a run of, par let's add a paragraph under here just so we can see it in action. And let's give that a class of max content. And so we'll come here and we'll do the same thing. We'll copy this guy 
And because we're gonna have a few of these, so let's do a paragraph with a max content. And now, as you can see, it just it just goes on and on and on and on. It will not break anywhere because the width of it is set there. It's sort of like if you said width a thousand pixels and you go smaller, that item's gonna overflow out the side. And that of course can be kind of annoying. So for now, I'm gonna comment this out. Uh, and then we'll go to the opposite one, which is our min content. And a min content is a lot like max content, but it's going to get to as small as it can possibly get. So what that means is it's going to look at the longest word that's in there basically, and that's as small as it can get. So even if I add more content here, uh, our products are great. The width of this is based on the word products because products is the longest one. And if there was room for two of these to fit next to each other, they would. We don't have room for that. But if we came in and turned this back on, but we changed this guy over to a min content, uh, I don't think I'd ever set this on a paragraph. Well, not a long paragraph anyway. Um, but let's come in and say min content. We don't really need the P dot there, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> it is what it is. Um, so you can see sometimes it's two words. Sometimes it's fitting two words on a line. Sometimes it's one. Maybe there's times where it's three. But it's finding the longest word in here. And if you had an image and you had other items that were inside that had a width on it, that might be what's actually controlling it. And things like min content can actually be really useful with CSS Grid in setting the size of columns and stuff sometimes. So min content is there. Less practical, but every now and then it just it saves the day and it can be a really good one um, that comes in. So, uh, or even sometimes for titles or things like that, less common I think than max content, um, but it can, it can definitely serve a purpose. And then there's the last one, which is sort of like the best of both worlds, which is fit content. And fit content's really interesting because uh, let's get rid of the, the longer title that we have, our products. And you'll notice right now it looks a lot like our max content did. And so it's going to, if it can behave like max content, it will, where it's going to go to its intrinsic max content size, everything's on one line. But then if it runs out of room, it's allowed to wrap. At this stage though, it won't wrap and then like fit to here and then wrap again if it gets the chance. As soon as that wrapping happens, it's now sort of fallen back to the with auto situation. So it's either in the max content and if max content can't fit, it goes to a width of auto and it keeps shrinking from there. And in this case will cause overflow, but that's just because this text is a little bit ridiculously large. Um, so, but on titles and stuff like that, that could be a really nice way to add in that responsiveness. So if we had that, and instead of having this ridiculous font size on here, we say through a clamp on it instead, and this was a two rem, five viewport width plus one rem, and then say a four rem as our largest size. This could be really good because as we get onto the bigger screen sizes, we get our big size, or let's go back to five. That's what we started with. We might as well stick with a really big font size. That size will shrink and shrink and shrink, and it keeps that look going. But then at one point at that two rem font size, it's gonna stop shrinking, but it's still allowed to wrap around. And so now it works at all the sizes and we don't run into any problems at small screen sizes. And I think fit content is one of those ones that's really underappreciated and can probably be used in a lot of situations. And with that, if you want this video on how I made this layout, that's like this dynamic grid that's sort of automatically handling different situations, doing some fun stuff and all of that. Or if you want that video on the differences between 100% and auto, both of those are right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, a really big thank you to Adam, Johnny, Stuart, Tim, and Randy for being my supporters of Awesome over on Patreon, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your on the internet just a little bit more awesome.